Ramadan is a metaphor for life. It is. It's not, it, it's not a profound thing, but it's supposed to remind us of the core fundamentals about who we are, right? What is the struggle, right? It is how do we find a time and a place in our lives where we can be as devoted as possible, right? Ramadan's the marathon. It's supposed to be representation of you know, the, the ins and outs of faith, of what does it take to really be devoted to our Creator and to our Lord. You know, I'll never forget, you know, talking about the fact that Ramadan, it was not meant to be easy. I'll never forget my friend who's a Christian pastor, who's now retired, uh, speaking at a Ramadan iftar many years ago, said that as Christians in Oklahoma, we can learn so much from Muslims, from the dedication they have to praying five times a day, mm -hmm. to giving up food, drink, and other uh, pleasures during Ramadan to please our Creator. Yeah. And see, that's the thing is that we are all part of the Abrahamic faith, Jews, sure. Christians, and Muslims. And I think we should use this as opportunities to learn from one another. Yeah. And you know, that's what the Quran says, uh, that the month of Ramadan was given to us so that we could attain taqwa. Yeah. And taqwa is oftentimes translated as, you know, God fearing, but it's more than that. Mm -hmm. It's that constant awareness that no matter what you do, where you are, what state you're in, God is always with you. Yeah, it's God consciousness, mm -hmm. right? It's living a life full of it, right? It, you know, as Muslims, we always talking about taking the intentions that our Creator has given us into every single thing that we do. And if we do that, how can we go wrong? Yeah, I think, man, you know, ultimately, the sacrifice that we make during Ramadan yeah. helps us connect with others who go through difficult situations, whether it be financial hardship, whether it be struggling with food insecurity, or you know, a new term that I really got introduced to, which is struggling with spiritual poverty. Yeah. Because Ramadan is a time where it's easier to come to religion, it's easier to come to Allah, it's easier to approach that spiritual connection. And it should remind us that at some point in our lives, we're all in that situation. Absolutely. So let's use this month to build each other up and to really elevate our soul our heart and our soul to the next level so we can be better people. I got a new word for you. Spiritual hygiene. Spiritual hygiene. Right. I like it. Ramadan is about improving your spiritual hygiene. It is. Just as we have to take a shower every day to make sure that, you know, we don't stink. Yeah. Right. Just as we make sure, you know, we put on our serums and our face masks and we do our things to, to clean our face. What are you doing to clean your soul? Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, we in, in Islam, we believe that every single part of our body mm. has rights over us. Mm. Right. That my spirit has to take care of the other parts of my body. My eyes has rights. My mouth has rights. My tongue has rights. Everything. Has a right. Of what does it mean to come from a long line of Muslims, to come from a, a, a beautiful tradition that eliminates the barriers between somebody at the bottom or somebody at the top, mm. right? You know, our you know our Creator is always saying that you know the only difference between me and you is in piety, nothing else. Yeah. And so I encourage everybody during the month of Ramadan to give it your best, right? Because once you get there for the next time, inshallah, you'll do even better.